Welcome. Uh, we're going to record this for our YouTube channel. I am Elizabeth Hargrave. I am the president of Ma, and I'm going to share my screen for you. Um, welcome to the August meeting of the Mycological Association of Washington, D.C. Happy Chanterelle season. Happy rain. <laughs> Um, tonight, I'm going to do a little intro. We've got some club news and some fungi in the news um, and some beautiful pictures from an iNaturalist. This is one of the uh, violet quaternarius that, that we found on the foray last weekend. Um, Mitch is going to do a little virtual ID table with some pictures people have sent him. John Harper has a chanterelle ID quiz for us. And then our main speaker tonight is Keith Seifert, who's going to talk about what's in a name. Um, lots of stuff going on in the club these days. Our next big event coming up is um, the Sequinota Foray, which we have in Pennsylvania every year. This year we're doing it over Labor Day weekend, so it'll be a day longer than it has been in the past few years. Um, and the registration deadline for that is August 15th. So for all of the events on this page, the link is um, at our website, modc.org. And there's actually a little events um, box right on that front page of the, the landing page for the website. Um, so sequinate, sequinote is super fun, mushroom walks multiple times a day, every day, and um, cooking mushrooms, there's going to be a cultivation workshop, there's going to be the DNA folks are going to have stuff going on, I believe. Um, great, great event. Uh, I think we've already got 60 or 70 people signed up, so that should be fun. Uh, our next monthly meeting is the first Tuesday in September. Uh, Rick Silver is going to talk about a trek he recently led um, in Nepal, specifically focused on looking for mushrooms. So that should be fun. Some interesting sounding finds on that walk, on that trip. Um, and then further out, we've got the Mushroom Fair in October. Um, I'm going to ask people to make sure you're on mute if you're not already, because I'm hearing little background noises. So in October at, at Brookside Gardens every year, we have a big mushroom fair where people bring in mushrooms that they've been finding. We lead several forays. It's a great, huge display of mushrooms. Um, and we get lots of just random people who are out at Brookside Gardens on the weekend. It's a really fun event. Um, in, at the end of October is the deadline for the Ma research grant that we have established, which won't be relevant to many of you, but if you know anyone who is a student in mycology at any level, undergraduate, graduate level, um, we do have some funds available to help with research. So we've helped you know, fund some people's DNA sequencing and, and things like that to, to, um, to further the science in, of mycology. Uh, and then Tom McCoy is going to run a photo contest again this year, and the deadline for that will be November 13th. So um, the details are on our website. You can check it out, but just keep that in the back of your mind as you're going out. As the mushroom season has definitely been heating up, take some nice photos for the photo contest in addition to the ones that are, uh, that are more focused on ID uh, characteristics. There's a bunch of non ma events that I wanted to point out as well. Um, this first one is sort of half ma. We're helping um, organize, and it's it's listed on our events page. But really, this is organized by um, Backbound Farm out in Garrett County, Maryland. They've got a full day cultivation workshop available in mid August. Um, the North American Mycological Association, so the national group of mushroom clubs around um, the US and Canada has an art contest that's going on. Um, they're gonna announce the winners at their foray, which is in late September, but submissions are due August 15th. So this is not just photos, but any medium, I believe, 
um, sculpture, painting, everything. Um, so you can check that out on the NAMA website. Um, and then, like I said, their foray is at the end of September at, in Missouri. I believe that's in the Ozarks. Um, that's always a fun event as well. Um, and then I have never been to this, but it's been going on for years. In Baltimore, in October, they have this Mushroom City Arts Festival. If anyone has been, tell us about it in the chat. Um, but I, I have thrown it on the calendar for people to know about. Um, I talked a little bit about the Folk Life Festival last month because it had just happened, but we got a big email from the organizers of, of the Folk Life Festival with lots more pictures that they took, which are um, available online. Anyone can go see all the pictures from the Folk Life Festival. They had a really nice article on the Folk Life Festival blog about the magic of myceliums. You can find that. Um, and they posted a couple really yummy looking recipes. Um, this crispy chicken sandwiches with oyster mushrooms and then a chanterelle one. So that's very timely. The, the chanterelle dumplings, I'm just going to interject because that's uh, that was the one that one of our members and the chef that I um, did the, um, the demo with. So he's one of ours. <laughs> that, is, that is awesome. Um, so that is up on the Smithsonian's website for however long they leave it up there. Um, so that's pretty awesome. Uh, and it looks fantastic. Um, another little piece of club news, we have started a Facebook group to supplement our Facebook page. So for those of you who use Facebook, go ahead and go join that group. And um, a group versus a page, makes it much easier to just have like informal chats and people can post whatever on our Facebook page, which we've always had at the very sort of top down. And we would love to get people doing more sort of bottom up discussion and posting pictures and whatever. So we have created this group on Facebook. Uh, the group is limited to more members only. Yeah, there are questions when you, you have to ask to join and we'll sort of double check that you're a member. But if you're coming there from tonight's meeting, that should be pretty easy to work at. Um, next little piece of board news. This is early in the year, but we do start thinking about next year's board already. Um, we, According to our bylaws, we have to have our proposed board all put together in a slate by October. So um, we are starting to think about the board for next year already. Um, I have here sort of the list of positions and who's in them now. Some of these people are not going to be able to come back next year. So we are definitely looking for new folks to join the board. I've already talked to a couple of you about it. Um, but we are a 100% volunteer run organization. So we always need more people to step up and help make things happen. So um, if you're interested in volunteering for the board, you can talk to me or to any of these folks on the board that you may know. Um, we're also interested in your suggestions of people. If you've been out on a foray with someone who seems really knowledgeable or helpful, um, or the cultivation workshops, if you've been interacting with other members and think one of them would make a really great um, leader, let us know. Um, we need a couple of people to help draft that slate. We have to have a nominating committee um, and it cannot be made up all of board members. So uh, we need a couple of you to step up uh, to help do that. Um, and if you're not ready to be on the board, but you wanna help out with some of the functions of the club, um, also let me know and I can try to plug you in. I, I do think going forward, we want to start doing sort of some more committee style work instead of having just one person in, turn, in charge of one thing. Um, and we're trying to sort of work that structure out. So hit me up. You can email me at info at modc.org or you can DM me here in the chat and I'll see it after I'm done talking. Um, but we'd love some help. And it's a fun group of folks, as you can imagine. Um, all right, moving on to stuff that I have seen in the news in the last month. There is a really cool project going on um, run by a woman named Toby Kears, who's in the Netherlands. Um, she has started this uh, group called the Society for the Protection of Underground Networks, SPUN, 
Um, and they're trying to really document the global distribution of mycorrhizal fungi and um, what they do in terms of things like sequestering carbon, um, but also just biodiversity and trying to um, document whether fungal diversity um, sort of mirrors the places of plant and animal diversity that are already being protected, or are there areas of fungal biodiversity that need protection purely on the basis of the fungi that are there um, that have been overlooked because they're not as important for the plants and animals? Um, so they're doing all this field work. They've raised a bunch of money, um, and somehow they got a bunch of press for it in the last month. Um, so there's a long article in Science about their um, fieldwork, and then also someone from the New York Times wrote up a really nice long article, and um, it ended up on the front page of the print edition of the New York Times. Uh, so it's a really fun article. If you've um, read Merlin Sheldrake's book, I'm uh, blanking on the name of it, Entangled Life, um, he was out on these forays as well as Toby Kears um, and a bunch of other mycologists sort of doing surveys of fungal biodiversity. Um, so check those articles out. Uh, seems like I'm talking about psilocybin every month. <laughs> I don't know if this headline is overstating what this letter means or not, but um, SAMHSA, the Substance Abuse and Mental Health Services Administration, which is part of HHS, um, responded to a member of Congress who had written in saying there should be a task force about legalizing, about the sort of what, what do we need to do to plan for the legalization of MDMA and um, psychedelic mushrooms for the treatment of mental health issues because um, it will have spillover effects on society and whatnot. Um, and so this, this letter back to this member of Congress says, yes, we agree there's a myriad of issues associated with the anticipated approval by FDA of psilocybin for the treatment of depression within approximately 24 months, which it's not crystal clear to me from the way this is written whether they really mean, yes, we are anticipating doing this in, within 24 months, or we're replying to your letter that asserted that we were going to do it within 24 months. Um, but I don't know, maybe Annie Weissman knows she works for the FDA. <laughs> Chime in in the chat. Uh, so I will put this out here that, that um, folks are definitely talking about this. Um, and there are a couple of other articles that I'll just point out. I made it into Politico. Um, they have a playbook podcast, and I didn't get a chance to listen to it yet, but um, they have an interview with a woman who's leading. There's currently a campaign in Colorado to legalize mushrooms, I believe, at, in, at the same level where they have marijuana right now. Um, I'd have to look into it more, but I believe that's what's going on in Colorado. And there's this interview on Politico. Um, and then Bloomberg had this article um, about the psychedelic industry going mainstream. They quote this estimate that the global pharmaceutical psilocybin market could be $6.9 billion by 2027. Um, and then one last article uh, on the NOVA website, which I just caught because I have a little Google News alert. <laughs> there was this fun article about why you can't really overcook mushrooms that's all about um, the cell structure of meat versus vegetables versus mushrooms and the fact that mushrooms have cell walls that are made out of chitin. Um, is directly related to the reason that they cook differently than either meat or vegetables. Uh, and the chitin is really resistant to heat. And so um, the mushrooms don't break down in the same way that vegetables do, and they don't toughen up the same way that meat does. So I thought that was an interesting piece. And I think that is, yep, that is everything I have for this month. <laughs>